For the name of the Lord bless you on this wonderful afternoon. Truly, God is awesome, and God loves you more than you can imagine. Again, this is Pro Pastor Prophet Johnson coming to you live from the wonderful city of Las Vegas. Listen again, God loves you more than you can imagine, and what he wants for you is to love him back. God had a wonderful initial plan, and that plan will still be fulfilled. That plan is being fulfilled even as we speak, even as you view this presentation, the, the will of God, the plan of God is being completed in the children of men. You know, Adam and Eve, a lot of folks think that Adam and Eve was God's plan A, but Adam and Eve was never God's plan A. Jesus was always God's plan A. From the foundation of the world, the Lord God knew that Adam and Eve was going to bite from that fruit. Because unfortunately, old Slootfoot was extremely cunning and crafty and subtle, more subtle than any beast of the field that the Lord God had made. And old Slootfoot convinced Eve to bite the fruit. <clears throat> he was really trying to get to Adam. <clears throat> and then what he really wanted, he wanted what God had. He wanted worship. He wanted adoration. He wanted lordship. And I'm so glad that when Jesus came, Jesus took back what Adam lost. And then Jesus didn't do like insurance does. An automobile policy for insurance, if you was in an accident, an insurance policy will, will take you back to the state of the condition before the loss. It's not going to give you more than the loss. So if your car was valued at 5000 they want to meet you possibly as close to 5000 as they can without going over. They want to repair your car back or give you a replacement car, same mileage, same model, and everything. Now, when Jesus came, Jesus did extremely far more than just take us back to Adam's state. Adam was just a dirt man, a dirt person. But when Jesus came and died on the cross, he didn't just leave us or redeem us back to a dirt creature, uh, human beings, but he took us to a level, to a status that is out of this world. As a matter of fact, before Jesus came in Adam, we didn't have access to the heavenlies like we have now right now. We are in heavenly places. As a matter of fact, God himself was living down here on earth or had his abode here on earth with Adam at that time. And that's going to take place again, Revelation chapter 21. So when we are born again, we're not born again of corruptible seed, of dirt, diamonds, rubies, or, or the blood of animals. But we are born again with the absolute precious blood and the precious life of Jesus Christ. Now, when we were when we were born initially in Adam, we were born after the flesh. We were born after this world. We were born on this earth. And as Adam was earthly, so are we earthly. But being born again, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we are now born again from heaven. So as he is heavenly, so are we heavenly. We are infinitely more than we think we are. But when we think we're more than we are, then we become less than nothing. I want to talk to you again about the heart of God and the necessity of getting all that God has for us. There are two incidents, several incidents in the Bible about demon possession, persons being demonized or demon controlled. That's what I want to talk to you about. There are some individuals who the devil is in their body, not in their flesh per se, but in their body, not necessarily in their spirit, controlling their spirit, but in their soul. And then there are sometimes individuals who are so interwoven with the devil, that fellow is in their physical bodies, in the flesh, in their spirit, in their soul. The devil is taking control. And we want to read about those two incidents right now. The first one we're going to talk about is a man, he identified himself as legion. And this is found in your Bible, St. Luke chapter 8. And we want to start there probably at verse uh, Luke 8 and verse 26. And they arrive at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And they arrive again at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over the against Galilee. And when he went forth, when Jesus went forth to land, Jesus got out of the ship, went to the land. There met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time. A certain man had devils a long time. Isn't that something? <laughs> All right. And wear, wear no clothes. He had the devils a long time and he had no clothes on. Neither abode or lived in any house, but he lived in 
the tombs. He lived in the graveyard. Watch this now. When the devil, when this man saw Jesus, he cried out and fell before him. And with a loud voice saying, what have I to do with thee, Jesus? Thou son of God, most high, I beseech thee, torment me not. Now this demon, and watch who he is, watch how many is in this man. Watch this here now. He said, I beseech thee, I command thee, don't you torment me. Watch what he said here, verse 29. Again, this is Luke 8, 29 now. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. Jesus commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For oftentimes it had caught him, and he, I just said, it caught him, and he was kept bound with change, and in fetters, change in foot cups, handcuffs, and he broke the bands, and was driven of the devils into the wilderness. Isn't that something? The devil doesn't want to be around civilization. The devil said, I'm going to take this individual and kill him. We're going to kill him. But I'm so glad Jesus came on the scene. Now, mind you, Jesus' disciples are with him as well. They're seeing all of this. They're terrified. They're hiding behind Jesus. Jesus, what are you trying to do to us? I'm training you to, do, I'm training you to deal with this. The harvest, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. I'm training you. I'm preparing you to deal with these kind of situations. And it's interesting, again, this is Luke chapter uh, 8, and you're going to see what happened in chapter 9. He said it's 12 out. You do the work, I want you to go and do it now. All right? So uh, Luke, this is Luke 8, uh, 20, uh, um, 9 again. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For oftentimes the unclean spirit had caught him, and he was kept bound with change and in fetters. And he break the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus said unto him, What is thy name? And the man said, or the demon said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. He said, My name is Legion. A legion was a military uh, terminology for mili for Roman terminology for, for a military uh, army and or military uh, a sergeant. Uh, he was a legionnaire. A legion, again, was compiled of at least two to 6,000 Roman soldiers, between two and 6,000 Roman soldiers. So this man is saying, I have up to 6,000 demons in me. My name is Legion, for we are many. Watch what happened here now. Verse 30. And Jesus said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils, many devils were entered into him. Isn't that something? You got individuals who don't have devils. But because of the things they do, unfortunately, they allow devils to enter them. And the last state of that man or the, the last state of that woman is worse than the first. Some things that you're doing, you shouldn't be doing. Because what you're doing, sin, is a doorway for satanic possession. Commission of sin is a doorway for satanic possession. So we want to leave sin alone. You're thinking about doing something today or tomorrow. You're looking forward to the weekend so you can go and do such and such. You're looking forward for the weekend so you can go and be with this person or go and be with that person. The, um, the New Year's is coming up. We're going to have a party on New Year. We're going to do a great mighty thing. But when you go off into sin, you open yourself up and demons <clears throat> come, and live, <clears throat> come and live within you. That's not what you want. Amen? Verse 31, 8, Romans, uh, uh, Luke 8, 31. And they besought him, they began to beg Jesus that he would not, that he would not command them to go out into the deep. Don't cast us into the ocean. Don't cast us into the Sea of Galilee. Don't cast us out of the city. Now these demons, 6,000, begin to plead with Jesus. Jesus, please, if you cast us out of this man, don't cast us out of this country. Don't cast us into the deep. Watch us here now. Verse 32. And there was a herd of many swines feeding on the mountain. And they besought Jesus that he would that they would that he would allow them, suffer them, to enter into the swines. And Jesus allowed them. Jesus said, Go. Then with the devils out of the men. Now these devils, they basically cast themselves out. <laughs> 
They were so afraid of Jesus. They were so terrified of Jesus. Listen, and that same Jesus now lived within you, the believer. That same Jesus, through the power of the Holy Ghost, God the Holy Ghost, lived within you. So every devil is terrified of the Jesus who is in you. We need to be just made aware of the Jesus who is in us. Amen? So here we go again. Verse 10, verse 33 again, uh, Luke 8, 33. Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swines, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. Amen? So these devils now basically cast themselves out because they knew Jesus was not going to allow them to stay in this man. The Bible lets us know in 1 John 3 and 10, Jesus speaking, he said, I come to destroy the works of the devil. It might be 3 and 8, but I come to destroy the works of the devil. Amen? So I want us to take a look at a clear picture of this situation again. Jesus and his disciples go over to the sea of the Galileans. Immediately they met him out of the tomb, a man possessed with, with 6,000 demons who identify themselves as being legion. Jesus didn't have to cast the demons out. They knew they was going to come out. And all they said, Jesus, if you, do, if you help us to leave, don't cast us out of the city. Don't cast us into the deep. Let us go. Don't cast us down to hell. Don't send us to the deep. Don't send us to hell. So they ran and, they ran and jumped in the pit. Came, Jesus said, basically said, go. They left the, the, the man and went and jumped into 2,000 pigs. And the pigs ran down into the river, into the Jordan River, I think it was, and drowned. And the demons left the Jordan River, left the pigs. Now they want to go and find somebody else they can get into. Amen. Now that is one situation where these demons, it was so easy to cast them out. Just seeing Jesus terrified them. But we want to see a situation where there was another possession and it wasn't so easy. Now, if you look at Luke chapter 8, chapter 9, we're not going to go there particularly, but Luke chapter 9, Jesus anointed his 12 to go out and cast out devils. Amen. Go out and cast out devils. Uh, heal, heal all diseases. Luke chapter 10, he, can, he sent another 70 also. He sent another 70 also. Told him to go and do the same thing. And these 70 came back, Luke 10, 17. They came back with great joy. They said, Master, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. They said, Master, even devils obey you. Ooh, you have given us some wonderful power and some wonderful authority. Even the devils are subject unto us through your name. Amen? All right. So now we see the disciples now cast out devils. Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means, my God, he said, nothing shall by any means hurt you. And so what we want to take a look at right here, we want to turn now to Mark um, 9, 29. And we want to look at Mark 9, actually Mark 9, um, my God. Okay. Mark 9, 14. Now, Jesus had went to the mountain of transfiguration. Jesus went up. Jesus, Peter, Peter went with Jesus, James, and John. So Peter, James, and John went with Jesus up to the mount of transfiguration. Jesus went up to talk with his father. And his father came and manifested himself, began to share with him. Elijah and Moses began to talk of Jesus. Peter seeing all of this. Now the other nine disciples are down at the base of the mountain waiting for Jesus to come back. But in the meantime, while the other nine disciples down at the base of the mountain, here come this man with his lunatic son. Here come this man with his son. And the son is lunatic. His mind is gone. He's almost like a quote-unquote uh, Lucaru, a, a quote-unquote werewolf. When the moon situate, is sitting in a certain situation, it began to affect him. It began to affect him so much that the demons tried to get him to commit suicide. That the, the ultimate goal of devils in your life is to get you to kill yourself. If they can get you to kill yourself, they know you got a hell to wait. Okay, all right. Now look right here again. This is found in the book of Mark. Book of Mark 9, uh, 9, verse 14. And when he would come to his disciples, Jesus came down off of the mountain. And when he was come to his disciples, he saw a great multitude of people about them, about his disciples. And the scribes 
and the law keepers and the interpreters of the law questioning, talking to his disciples. What's going on, disciples? And immediately all the people, when they beheld Jesus, they were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him and said unto the scribes, he said unto the scribes, what reason ye with my disciples? And one of them answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which have a dumb spirit. He has a dumb spirit, a lunatic spirit, a spirit of epilepsy. And watch what he say here now. Verse 18. This is Mark 9, 18. And wheresoever the spirit taketh him, the spirit tear him. Now, it's not the boys getting the rocks and cutting themselves. Now, Legion was doing that. Legion was getting these rocks, cutting himself, thinking about cutting myself. The demons will come out. We got kids cutting themselves today. But this demon himself tore the boy, trying to kill the boy. Watch what happened here now. Verse 18. And wheresoever the spirit take a hold to him, the spirit got a, the spirit seized control of the boy, began to tear the boy, and the boy began to foam at the mouth, began to grind, gnash with his teeth, and he began to pank away, begin to faint, begin to go in convulsions, begin to black, black out. And I spake to the disciples that they should cast this devil out of my boy, and they could not. Now, this is interesting. Now, this is interesting. Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I give you power to cast out all devils and heal all sickness and diseases. But here go these nine disciples down at the base of the mountain. They did it before. How come they're going to ask Jesus later on, Master, why can we cast them out? And this is one of the primary reasons why it's so vitally important for us to get seriously real with God. Get on our face with God. There are, going to be some, there are going to be some things in this life. If we're not prayed up, if we're not really, we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be afraid. If we're not saturated with the love and the power of God, these things are not going to come out of these children. Hello? Listen, you got, listen. You got preachers right now in the pulpit preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ who are bound with the perverse spirit. They are bound, they call it a homosexual spirit, but there's no such thing as a homosexual spirit. It's a spirit of perversion. They are bound by and has been bound by it for years. I'm not talking about sinners out in the world. I'm talking about preachers in God's house. Preachers in God's house. I'm talking about ladies and women in God's house who are bound by perverted spirits. And they have just given up hope. I've been, I was born this way. These are men of the gospel. They're not men of God. They're not women of God. But they want to be saved. They want to know God. They want to be free. But this kind takes a sincere casting out. It takes a complete breaking. My God. Listen, it's not a joke or game. Again, we got people in the choir. Many of our Christian musicians, they call themselves Christians. They make our Christian music and we worship with it. And we praise God to the music. And we enter into the presence of God based on this, some of this music. But these guys and girls are full of spirits of perversions and who cannot set themselves free. They have just completely given up, said, there's no hope for me. I will never be free. I'm this way and that's how I am. I'm going to continue to sing. I'm going to continue to preach. I'm going to continue to do what I've always do. And when I go to the hotel room, when I go back to my hotel room, I'm taking me a young boy with me. The lady said, I'm taking me a girl with me. I'm taking, I'm taking a woman with me. The men said, I'm taking a man with me. And I'm going to come back and preach again tomorrow morning. I'm going to come and teach again tomorrow morning. And I'm going to lay my hands on you. And the Spirit of God will come up on you. But you better rest for sure. It is not the Spirit of God that's coming up on you. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Jesus loves you so much. And it is of necessity that you get delivered. Why? Because except you, we, except we get delivered, we're going to be shocked when we stand in front of God. 
You know, Jesus said there in the book of Matthew, I think it is chapter 7, verse 21, not everyone that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. He said, many going to say to me at that day, Lord, have we not cast out devils in your name? We done many for wonderful works in your name. We built cathedrals. We healed the sick. We raised the dead all in your name. And he's going to say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you curse, your workers of iniquity. My brother, my sister, God loves you. Let's go on here again. Now, this young man here was possessed. Spirit, soul, and body. He was possessed. Spirit, soul, and body. The devil physically ripped him, tore his skin. Tore his skin, tore him, put holes in him. He didn't tear his own self. The spirit itself tear him. Verse 18, this is found in Mark 9, 18. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and he gnashes with his teeth, and panic away. And I speak to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. Verse 19, Jesus answered and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring the boy to me. And they brought the boy to Jesus. And when, the, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit did what? Tear him again. The spirit already, quote unquote, embarrassed the disciples, showed the disciples, you can't get me out of here. I'm, I'm entwined into this boy. I'm mean it all in. I don't know how this devil got in this boy. I don't know how this devil got in this boy. Jesus' ministry to this boy was completely different to the ministry he did with Legion. The reaction of this spirit is completely different with the reaction of the 6,000 demons in this man. Look at verse 29 again, verse 20. And they brought, they brought the boy to Jesus, and when the spirit saw him, immediately, straightway, the spirit tear him. The spirit didn't come out, the spirit didn't go into the conversation. If you cast me out, Jesus, don't, don't, he didn't do all of that. This was a different type of situation. This thing, now, it, the, the demons in the man was in there a long time. But the man still had some ability to communicate. The man ran and worshiped Jesus. In this particular case, the spirit tried to embarrass not only the disciples, but embarrass Jesus. You can't get me out of here, Jesus. Look at verse 20 again. And they brought him unto Jesus. And when Jesus saw him, straightway the spirit tear him and fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming. Some people read this here as, being, as saying, and when the spirit saw Jesus, straightway the spirit saw when the, and straightway the spirit saw him. When the spirit saw Jesus, the spirit tore tore the man, tore the boy, and fell on the ground, foaming, wallowing. And Jesus, notice what Jesus did. Jesus did not ask these kind of questions when he was casting out legion. But in this particular case, Jesus wanted to get some background information. What's going on with this situation? In verse twenty-one, and Jesus asked his father. How long ago is it? Uh, how long is it ago since this came upon your child? Came upon him, and the man said, "Of a child." Now this was already a kid; it was already a young child. He could have been his teen or late teen, wherever. But the man said, "Of a child, somewhere down the road." Listen, my brother, my sister. Some of our children are not only demonized or hyperactive, hyperactive or uh, some other medical conditions, they are demonized, they are possessed, and there is hope for them. The hope for them is in the name of Jesus. Don't, don't take them to a Catholic priest to get deliverance, but take them directly to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and he will deliver them. Hallelujah. My God, my God, I said Jesus will deliver them. Amen. So again, look here at verse, and oftentimes, look what the man said in verse 21. And Jesus asked his father, how long is it ago since this came upon him? And the man said of a child. And oftentimes it cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Our poor performance as ministers of the gospel bring a rebuke to Christ. It, 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 it belittles Christ in the minds of people. If we don't stand up and do the work of, of the work of the kingdom, it brings a shame to our master and savior. It makes people think that God is impotent, that God can't do, God can't help them. 
Look what the man here said again. Verse 23, 22. And oftentimes this spirit cast my son into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if you, Jesus, if you can do anything, your disciples can do it. But if you can do it, maybe you can do it. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. Isn't that wonderful? And my brother, my sister, this incident with the apostles, with the disciples, took place before the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now, when the Holy Ghost comes, the same power that resurrected Jesus from the dead, that same power is now ours. All the power of God, the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter 3, I think it is verse 18, that you may know the love of Christ, which passes all knowledge, passes understanding, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. All of God resides in us. All that is accessible to God is now accessible to us. My brother, we are no longer weaklings, but we are powerful beyond measure. Hallelujah. Now look at verse, verse 24. And straightway immediately the father of the child cried out with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. And there are people today, right now, they lock them up in insane asylums. You got mothers and fathers around the world right now crying for their daughters and their sons to be set free. And their only freedom is not Prozac, is not how dog, is not medication. Their only freedom is the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about this, some of this crazy watered down stuff. We, again, we got people, men and women in the pulpit right now, boys and girls in the choir stand right now. Oh, they need to be set free. They're not only bound by homosexuality and lesbianism, they're bound by pantheism. What, what I'm talking about, man, this crazy stuff where, where, where they are stimulating themselves. They are stimulating themselves, man, uh, uh, masturbation. They're using objects to, they don't want to get married, get married for what I can take care of myself. They need to be free. So they're under spirit bondage. Oh, you got these Jeffrey Dahmers. He didn't want to do what he was doing, but he was controlled by evil spirits. Oh, M Marilyn Manson. Remember Marilyn Manson? Not, not, uh, what was his name? Was make me sure I got his name right. Marilyn Manson, that was this guy. He took, the, he took Marilyn's first, the Marilyn Monroe first name and took Charles Manson last name. They said that young man went to church looking for salvation, but the church turned him away. He said, since the church doesn't want me, I'm going, to go, I'm going wholeheartedly to the world. Oh, listen, saints, let's stop playing church. Let's stop playing church. It's real. The Bible even told us not to even have fellowship with those who got a form of godliness. He said, turn from those folks. They got a form of godliness. They know how to shout. They know how to pray. They know how to utter words, but they don't have any power whatsoever to live right. They have no power whatsoever to cast out a devil. He said, turn from those fellows. Have nothing to do with them. And when Jesus saw the people coming, Oh, look what Jesus said, verse 14. And straightway the Father said, help me with uh, verse 24. Verse 25. When Jesus saw the people came running together, Jesus rebuked the foul spirit. What kind of spirit was it? It was a foul spirit. Deaf and dumb lunatic spirit. Jesus rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto the spirit. He didn't rebuke the boy. He rebuked the spirit. Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. Now, Jesus didn't have to say that to Legion. This was a whole different situation here. Legion, this spirit was just inside of the hollow place of Legion, but it wasn't all entangled into his flesh, all entangled into his body. This devil had the ability to, I mean, it was just had the ability to do all kind of crazy stuff with the boy, all kind of crazy stuff. My God. And Jesus cast him out. The devil didn't voluntarily leave on this case. Oh, God, we got many individuals like that right now. They're bound. They're tormented. But they can, they're coming out. I promise you in Jesus' name, they're coming out. Not because of the glory of a man, but because of the glory of God who lives within man. Hallelujah. Verse 26. And the spirit cried and rent the boy, tore the boy again, rent him, tore him again, rent him sore and came out of him. Isn't that something? It wasn't just down in the hollow part of his belly, but that spirit was in the boy, inside of his spirit, soul, and in his body, inside of him. He was possessed with them. It was all in his, all in, you remember the movie, uh, The Diary of Some Girl, what was this girl's name? Woman of God, what was that girl's name in that movie? <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Oh, what was that girl's name? It was a movie. This boy, he was in love with her. And uh, she was all on the floor, all twisted up. That thing was no longer just in her spirit or in her soul. That thing had control of her body and everything. Oh, God. And God has given us power over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt us. Listen, we got to get the work done. I said, we got to get this work done. Hallelujah. And I'm almost done. Listen, God loves you more than you can imagine. And when Jesus, verse 25, and when, and when Jesus saw the people come running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, said unto him, thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter, and enter no more. When you cast him out, tell him, don't, don't come back again. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him and was and he was as one dead insomuch that many said, this is dead. The boy looked like he was dead. But Jesus took the boy by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. And when he was coming to this house, watch what the disciples said. When they came into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast him out? How come we couldn't cast them out? We cast other demons out, but how come we couldn't cast them out? And look what Jesus' words were. Verse 29. This is Mark 9, 29. Jesus said unto him, This kind can come out forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. This kind, if there is a this kind, there are other kinds. And this kind only come out but by prayer and fasting. My brothers and my sisters, let's get on our face before God and let's sincerely give him our all because we want everything he has to offer. There's a dying world. There is a demon-possessed world, preachers included, uh, women of God, women included in the pulpit. They want to be free. They're on a choir stand. They don't want to, they don't want to taste for a woman. They don't want to, these men don't want to taste for men. We got bishops who are, who are homosexuals. They don't want to be that way. They don't, that's not, it's not, that's not who God made them. Hallelujah. God made them male and female and put them together. He didn't put two men in the garden. Two, had he put two men in the garden, there would be no humanity. Had he put two women in the garden, there would be no humanity. Hallelujah. But he put a woman and he put a man and a woman in there. He gave a man a complimentary being that will compliment him. That was a, a mate that was that will compliment him. And she, and she didn't and she didn't have a male organ. Hallelujah. And he didn't have a female organ. God love you. God love you so much. And I love you too. Listen again. This is Prophet Pastor Johnson. We want you to know to hold on to God. Don't throw in the towel. Don't give up. God has your best interest in mind. He loves you more than you can imagine. And what he want to return is for you to love him back. Listen, don't be ashamed of your homosexuality. Just repent of it and confess it. Forsake it. 